Hi, everyone. Welcome to Abby Research Reads. I am Dr. Kristen here with a recommended read for you. This one's on suffrage, and it's called Why We Marched by Susan Ware, who is a historian of material culture, really, at Radcliffe College, which is a part of the Harvard network and is the kind of focused women's college. I didn't even know what material culture was until I met Dr. Aaron, who did her whole PhD on material culture. And essentially what it is, is the artifacts that we collect um, and, and the stories that they can tell about who we were and what we valued. It's all this stuff. So like material culture of this office is all my Funko dolls. <laughs> it's the framed picture of Belfast that's right there. Cause that's my favorite, like one of my favorite places in Belfast. It's the fact that I've got a Harry Potter thing that's right there. It's the base where, how do I do this? The baseball <laughs> from the Kansas city uh, monarchs, which is a Negro league baseball that I uh, got because I really, really want to learn more about the Negro leagues, but also because I have a really, really strong relationship with a show called sports night. Um, so those are the material culture that kind of tell you a lot about me. So in this untold stories of the women's right to vote, what Susan Ware does is take a bunch of objects that tell the story of suffrage and talk about the women through them. And I will tell you, I've been teaching suffrage and researching suffrage for a long time. And there are so many stories in here that I had never heard of. For instance, did you know that sister wives out in Utah were a really big part of the suffrage movement? I did not. Um, I loved the, like the chapters on political cartooning and things like that. There was absolutely chapters on, you know, Alice Paul and the jail and the pins they made for, and all of the, the stuff that, you know, the sashes, the buttons, the riding on the horse, all of those things, the imagery of suffrage that we know, but there were so many stories in this book that I had never, ever heard. It's engaging. It's academic for sure. She's got receipts in here for days, but I don't think it's stuffy academic. It took me a, it's certainly not a book I breezed through, and some of that's because I really wanted to spend time with it, but it's not a difficult read either. If you're looking to, um, you know, up your suffrage knowledge, it's definitely, definitely one that I would recommend. We spend some time with, um, you know, for instance, a suffragette named Alice Stone Blackwell, who was incredibly um, involved in, for instance, the Armenian crisis of the 1890s. Did you know what that was? I didn't. Um, and so I learned a lot about that. Um, I, like I said already, I learned a lot about sister wives. Uh, Sojourner Truth is as essentially the original Beyonce, the woman who sold her image and controlled her image so much um, and kind of what that looks like. I learned about the mountaineers for suffrage and the women who hiked peaks to raise awareness and I learned so, so much. We talk a lot in the suffrage conversation and in feminism in general about how white the history is. A lot of that is because it was, you know, Susan B. Anthony and, and uh, Katie Stanton and Carrie Catt who wrote the history and they did that intentionally. And we've talked about that before. They crafted the narrative. The hit, you know, history is written by people. It, history is won by people who write it down. And so the history of the suffrage movement for a really long time was the history of the New York suffrage movement of about 20 women that had a very clear legacy with each other and that they kind of, you know, decided their, um, their, the people that would take over for them and things like that. We need to trouble that narrative, not only because there were people of color in it, not only because it was a kind of racist movement in a lot of ways, not only because they should have and did in fact take a lot of their, um, lineage from indigenous women that have been largely written out of the narrative. You can hear all about that in our coverage of the podcast and nothing less that I will make sure we link in the show notes below this. But also because it happened outside of the East Coast. It happened around the world. It happened in tiny towns in Iowa in the same way that it happened around dinner tables in New York City. The suffrage movement was a movement that was 70 odd years and it still continues today because really what it is is a voting rights movement. And we're still having voting rights agitation. We're still advocating for every American citizen to have equal access to the ballot box. So understanding that we have to trouble all the narratives along the way. We have to trouble the 13th, 14th, 15th and 19th amendments. We have to really, really understand who it was written for, who it allowed and who it didn't. 
And this is a book that lets you sit with that in a way that is creative, to be honest. I loved learning about the different ways ballot boxes were constructed and the, the ways buttons were such a big deal in the way that almost like buttons are as big of a deal as like statement t-shirts now, or, um, you know, having the right swag of the campaign that you're on has always been important. Um, the intersections of capitalism and suffrage happened a little bit in this book, although I know it, it is talked about a whole lot more in white feminism. Um, which I appreciated as well, the book White Feminism. So if you're looking to expand your knowledge, um, also if you thought that we were going to stop talking about suffrage because it's no longer 2020, I'm really sorry to dissuade you of that notion. Because part of being a voting rights movement is that it's still happening. We still need to be talking about it and there's still lessons we can learn from it. So again, this book is called Why We Marched. It's by Susan Ware. It's absolutely a recommended read from me. So much so that I texted Dr. Hinson immediately as I was writing it. And I was like, Erin, this book's about material culture. And I can't wait to get her perspective on it when she gets around to reading it. We both have tons and tons of books to read. And so she can tell us from her perspective as somebody who is an anthropologist who studies material culture all the time. From this armchair historian and sociologist who just loves learning, gold star from me. That's all for now on this edition of Abbey Research Reads. We'll see you next time.